Hello and happy Monday to all out there. Welcome into the PHLY Phillies podcast. I am Jamie Lynch in with Renee Washington and Tyler Zuli as always. And a Phillies homestand means John Foley joins us on this Monday. Uh, welcome in everybody in the chat. Let's get a little thumbs up for a split series. Uh, let me just say this. Four game series suck. Because we talked about it last week. Two and two is like, bleh. Nobody wins or loses the series. I kind of hate them. Like, because if you win 3-1, you're leaving this weekend feeling absolutely electric about the Phillies. It goes to two and two and you go, meh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially especially for the Phillies. I think, I think you know, the Pirates are probably pretty happy with two and two. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like, hey, we split two and two with this, this Phillies team that is supposed to be a contender so you know it, there's no reason to despair right now eight and eight that's fine we have seen much slower starts but uh you know it's a soft part of the schedule right here and they they really need to step it up yeah yeah, yeah that's exactly it i mean i feel like a split weekend just odd because you go four games just, it's just and it's lame. like you kind of finish how you start <laughs> yeah. like it's, yeah. it's weird it's it's just you end up tying but i will agree with you john i think the pirates probably are feeling a lot better walking away from the split series than the phillies are because there's definitely some areas that are concerning when you look at the, the weekend as a whole. But I will say also, guys, um, to backtrack on this Monday, it is Jackie Robinson Day. Yes, uh, the 42 15. jerseys yes. are coming out tonight. I Today love is this the day. Night. So happy Jackie Robinson Day to everyone in the chat. Chris, Kim, Ray, Provolone, John, Dave P. I know, Chris, you're first again. Congrats to Slim on being that number one. Uh, Matt, Deckard, Randy, and Steve. Happy Monday. Happy Jackie Robinson Day. There's there's a lot of positives still, though, from this weekend as a whole. Yeah, we'll go through there's game by game. There's a lot that we definitely will continue to kind of uh, frustratingly talk through. But overall, feels like there were some great positives and glimpses that we saw this weekend. Yeah, we'll go. Uh, we'll recap the weekend. We'll look ahead to this Rocky <laughs> series, talk about what happened to, around baseball. Uh, so, John, you were down there all weekend um, for the most part. Uh, Saturday is a, a birthday of yours, and you got some nice family time in. So happy belated there! Yes. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, the weekend was. Um, it started off with the City Connect failures, <laughs> um, <laughs> and now that they lost a game in the City Connect uniform, I think uh, I speak for everyone when I say burn them and shoot them burn to them. hell, never to be seen wow, again. Wow, you're one of those. Yeah, like burn one them. bad game, and I'm and we're done. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'm bottle in the, I'm in the up same the place. Ashes and send it I'm to the moon. The, I'm in the same place. They, they, we tried it, you know. <laughs> I was ambivalent on the jerseys. They took law, so you know, let's come with fire, let's come with hammers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they looked like. they looked better on the, helmet the field. Was awesome. Yeah, it yeah. looked better the than I thought. Was really the cool. helmet, the but hat. it's just a like the hat. yeah. I, the listen, we're very we're also very superstitious in the city. So anytime we see, you know, a bad performance, and it'd be the opposite if they played really well. That we'd say wear them every day. Oh, yeah, absolutely! Yeah, you know, yeah. like scrap all the yeah. other jerseys. I'll just wear the city connects. But yeah, unfortunately, the city connects did not bring good luck. And mm. uh, in fact, they was... brought a lot of weird plays, sloppy plays. Um, it just was a really it was odd, a strange ball game. game. <laughs> strange ball game for both teams. Yeah, lots of strange plays. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's unfortunate for Nike. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to shed a tear for them, but. You know, uh, if they had won that game, we'd we'd be looking at the jerseys a lot different. <laughs> Sales would be spiking. Uh, <laughs> and then, of course, Bryce Harper, I guess, um, conscientiously, or I don't think that's by mistake. If I had to guess, um, I guess that was Saturday, decided to bust out the cream jerseys from last year. Yeah. Uh, and on the Castellanos game winner, we'll get into it, the team celebrating and one of these things does not look like the others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was pretty funny troll job by Bryce Harper. Is it, you know what? Bryce, <laughs> one thing about Bryce is he's going to make sure he looks good out there. And if he does not like his jersey, you know, he's a showman. If he does not like his jersey, if he does not like the appearance, he's, he's going to change it. So I hope a lot of players follow suit. And yeah. Maybe sort of like. Listen, you got to have fun with it. And Bryce Harper, I feel like right now, uh, definitely a little frustrated, but he's still like leaning into what makes him great Bryce Harper, his personality. And he's like, I'm going to control one of the things I can change. Um, so hats off to Bryce for that, because I felt like in that moment is like, all right, Bryce, we see you. I, I respect that. I respect that. Yeah. <laughs> and you could definitely see the difference in the nameplate, yes. the coloring, <laughs> the number, all of it. It was clearly last year's cream uniform. That's so much better. Like, what did they do? Like, yeah. How do they okay these with the tiny names? I, I'll never understand. It's pretty amazing. Everybody in the chat seems pretty anonymous. Uh, 
They seem to hate them. Kim says they're horrible. Uh, spir <laughs> spiral out. Damn, man. I thought we were buddies. He says, Thanks, well, that Renee, this guess. would be a pretty ugly show. No offense, fellas. Damn. Wow. <laughs> no, that's that's, that, that, that's absolutely offense. <laughs> that's the definition that's of offense. I love when people say, like, respectfully or no offense. Right. No offense, but I'm going to offend you. you. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, yeah. but you didn't have to say it. <laughs> you said the quiet part out loud. <laughs> Uh, but yes, uh, Saturday was, uh, these are the highs and lows of April baseball. Saturday uh. was way too fun to be an April game. Um, the, it was really good to see Nick Castellanos and a great quote Finally. on the post game. He goes, yeah, we needed that shit. I needed that. I needed that and I was just, I like <laughs> felt that like he, he got off the schneid a little bit. He went up there just to attack. Uh, gets the game-winning double. Even if the center fielder was playing deeper, I still think that one drops. He smoked yeah. that one. Uh, so that was really nice to see. That was a fun. That was a fun ass April baseball game. It sure was. Yeah. And uh, and next next quotes. I think that's why the city Likes still him. still really embraces him, even though he you know he goes through these horrible slumps with you know and just not not laying off those low and away pitches. Um, a lot. A lot of players would not get the sort of the the leeway that Nick has gotten, and it's because mm. he's so real and he'll say things like that, um, and he's just genuine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think what made it even better was coming off of Friday, where I had written down like one of the only positives that I really took from Friday was Randy Wolf on the 20th cool. anniversary of the opening of Citizens Bank Park and his son Hudson. That moment was great. The kid and, has an arm and for then a six-year-old. I know. And then it all went kind of like downhill from there. So Saturday was also great because of like, ah, oh, okay. This, this is what the Phillies do, unfortunately. The inconsistencies. You have a weird, sloppy game Friday. You have a great game. Or at least a, a, you pull out a win Saturday. It was a beautiful day. It was a chance for Nick Cassianos to finally see the ball off his bat, help the team win. And honestly, I felt like that was... As he talked about, we all we all knew that. As soon as that play happened, it's like, there it is, Nick. There's yeah. that moment. Break through the slump. Get yourself back feeling good. Um, he was one of the guys that had that breakthrough moment this weekend. There were a couple others as well that had a play that allowed them to kind of get the cobwebs off and, you know, mm -hmm. get back to feeling right. Yeah, I think the bullpen and John, you were down there and, you know, got to talk to Rob and everybody after the game. I think that's a that's a bullpen win. Uh, when mm -hmm. you look at the performances of Alvarado, Hoffman, uh, Soto, and Strom, like, they, they kept you in that game because Spencer Bur Turnbull goes out and allows four runs, you know, yeah. has his first kind of human game here so mm -hmm. far in three starts. Uh, and the bullpen was excellent. And they came in and they gave you an opportunity to have that Nick Cassiano. They sure did. Off. They just shut it down after Turnbull. And, you know, Turnbull, you know, I guess he was never going to keep that perfect ERA. <laughs> through yeah. the entire that was season. going to be tough. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, you know, he did, he did an okay job. And then, yeah, the bullpen, the bullpen looks good. There's, there's signs of life here. I know they're eight and eight. I know everybody's disappointed that it's still a pretty slow start, but you know, there's, there's signs that, that things are going well and they, you know, I don't want to make excuses for them, but they've caused some bad luck, especially mm -hmm. Harper um, in terms of hard hit balls, just being right at people, that kind of thing. You saw his frustration when he went oh, into the yeah. dugout. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think he let out a, a rather large F bomb and uh, threw his helmet down and spiked the bat. Yeah. Uh, they asked him about it after the game. He's like, yeah, I thought I was going to get a hit. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, if I was hitting the ball 110 miles an hour, I would expect some hits too. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. He's like three push-ups away from uh, – <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from really yeah. just an MVP season, but I know. Well, going back to the bullpen really quickly, just to hit on the something that I I loved reading, um, that the bullpen after the series against Atlanta has bounced back. We had talked about that on yeah, Friday as well. Of you know the way that they were, although very frustratingly performances in in the first series, you could see the progression rounding out. Of course, with the return of Orion, that made it even that much more exciting. But you saw Jose Alvarado coming in uh, after Saturday. Hadn't allowed an earned run since giving up five against the Braves opening day. Strom had 12 strikeouts in seven and two-thirds innings. Soto had only allowed one earned run through seven outings. Junior Marte, another positive that we had talked about, who had began the year with six straight scoreless appearances before losing his command on Friday. You know, you see the bullpen. They had been making those steady improvements since that opening weekend. And that is a positive because when you add Orion Kirkring back in the mix, it was great to see him back out there. Um, those are the types of things, you know, the small victories that we can take away from even this split series. But for Bryce Harper in that moment, uh, listen, we understand, you know, the cameras are going to be on you. They're going to follow. They know what's coming. 
Bryce very frustrated, hasn't been able to give the at-bats. Obviously, he had that three-homer game last week. But other than that, has really struggled. The numbers yeah. that you see, not good at all that Bryce has been performing Um and so to be 2-16 and 16 in this four-game series, I know Rob was saying, you know, he's trying to do too much. And he's, like, overthinking things. He's overswinging a little bit. His contact point isn't exactly where he usually has it. He's got to play through it. And I think letting out some of that frustration is that. It's your way of, like, I'm not happy with this. I'm letting this out, and I'm moving forward because I know I gotta get, I'm going to get back. Yeah, I mean, so baseball is just such a weird game where you can do everything right. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't yeah. know if Bryce – has too many problems with his swing. Um, somebody asked me to look up his, his uh, batting average on balls and play uh, over the weekend and, and going into, I think, Saturday's game. It was, it was 200, which tells you it's, it's some bad luck. Yeah. And just like time after time, you see these, these balls at the warning track. You look at the the, the exit plays. velocity. Yeah. Oh, the them. double plays. Yeah, yeah, uh, double plays. Oh, I, didn't. <laughs> I feel like that's a that's a word we have to like ban from the show. <clears throat> yeah, double plays. Well, there are two teams with more double plays in the Phillies. Uh, are there really? I think that's... it's the Yankees, and I just saw it not long ago. I'll find that. Uh, but you know, people may be thinking that Harper was pissed because he didn't get the hit there. I think what he realized, calculating it in his head real quick, uh, was that his batting average dropped below Johan Rojas's. So I think he was probably a little bit uh, pissed when he when he realized that. I think That's, that was the that was the yell in the dugout was yeah. like that guy's got a better batting average than me. Ask this. <laughs> On the flip side, Rojas starting to you know. Yes, uh, I had the I read yeah. the numbers in Zalecki's email or maybe Yo, it was bro. Matt Breen the past week. I think he's seven of sixteen now. He's batting like four twenty over the last week. So that's. That's a a big positive. Yo, bro. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, all the Phillies coaches were saying like he's so he's so close to it clicking. It sure did not look like it. Um, <laughs> you know, all this talk about once his lower half sinks up with his top, whatever they were saying. I I didn't really buy it, but it looks like maybe maybe it was true. Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, you know, exactly. in Zalecki's newsletter, they talked about Kevin Long and him and how much time together they spent, mm-hmm. and they went over all the swing mechanics, and they basically said <laughs> he was thinking too much. Uh, and Kevin Long said, "We're not going to talk about his approach anymore. Mm-hmm. Me and him are talking about this, and it's time to attack and go out there and basically be a baseball player now." Like, hopefully, all the offseason work and yeah. re, re, you know, work in the swing there is now just in you yeah, you know yeah. what i mean and exactly. go attack and that's what we had talked about with nick and johan and they both were in similar situations obviously different parts of their career you have a young yoro who's trying to get his at bats going because he is yoro again guys and then you have mm-hmm. nick who was just he's always so streaky he was in a slump but for both of them it really came down to overthinking and those are two guys that cannot afford to play in their head and overthinking the mechanics and chase rate and all these other nuances but instead just focusing on you know, one that bad at a time. And so I think for each of them, we've seen them working through it. And I love the fact that they're not talking about it because everybody else is, you know, everybody else around the Phillies media, you know, shows we're talking about it. But for those guys, you almost have to just let them rock, like let them go, let them cook, let (laughs) Let them do their, do what they do. (laughs) I I think that's exactly right. And you know, and, spring training off season work on things but by the time the season starts it needs to just be muscle memory right you can't go up there thinking about a million different things at once it's it's going to kill you um you know some players more than more than others i i think we you know when we want castellanos up there we don't want him thinking about I don't want him Chase thinking rate. at all. I don't at want all. him thinking at all. Yeah. At all. I just don't. <laughs> like, go attack. Just, like, you are, uh, you know. You know what man. to do. Go do it. Yeah, yeah. Drop be, another be, button. Be. Get your swag back and go attack. Yeah, like, exactly I don't want you right. thinking at all. I mean, when right. it's game time, you shouldn't have to think. And with the game time app, you don't have to. Oh, now, wow. over at the game time. <laughs> She's a pro, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> over at the game time app, they simplify the process as you're getting those last minute ticket deals. You can download the game time app today. You can take advantage of our code PHLY to be able to get $20 off. And with the game time app, they allow it to be a lot more stress free as you're buying tickets to games, to concerts, comedy shows, whatever it is that you're looking to attend in your area. The game time app also does a good job. They send you alerts when the latest tickets drop in your area. I know I always get some great alerts about some new concerts and things to look for. They also allow you to see where your seats are going to be located. So you don't have to worry about something blocking your view or are you going to be looking at a column in the middle of the stadium with the game time app, see your seats, Find your tickets easily. They give you great prices. And then, of course, now when you show up, pull out your phone. Your ticket's right there on your phone. You don't have to worry about scrambling for printed out tickets like my dad still does 
or anything like that. Come on, Mr. Washington. I know, I'm working on it, I guys. I he's, he's a dinosaur. You also just have a chance to have it right on your phone. No Wi-Fi issues. What's this No Apple paper wallet? tickets. <laughs> you have it on your phone. Is that what he says? Yeah, we're Where's finally getting wallet? him there. We're finally getting him there. My dad's <laughs> finally using the Apple wallet um, and coming around. And you guys can, too, with the Game Time app. Again, that code PHLY gets you $20 off your purchase. Well, if you were a smart uh, person, you would have uh, bet the Pirates yesterday because that's a uh, put your feet up and kind of enjoy type of bet. And you can get some action in the game with the Bet Parks app. Bet Parks is the hometown local app, and you can get in the zone with the Bet Parks Sportsbook app. Money in the moments. Uh, what's coming up? Well, tonight we got the Colorado Rockies coming to town. Uh, you know, being the uh, the cynical sports fan I am, I may take a look at Jake Cave home run odds mm. and maybe pounce on that. Uh, you probably get like plus fourteen hundred for that because. Uh, you know, it's Philadelphia and bad things happen. But good things can happen to you with the Bet Parks Sportsbook app. The Phillies tonight on the money line on Bet Parks currently are minus 275 on Aaron Nola Day. The Rockies plus 220. Uh, Phillies on the run line tonight, minus one and a half. You got to lay minus 122 to get that. I do like the Phillies tonight. Uh, and the over under on this one is at eight and a half. Uh, life is too short to play under, so I'm always an over kind of guy. But you can get a lot of fun it, with the Bet Park Sportsbook app. Yesterday, Sunday, Masters Day, you pull up the app live. You can live bet it. And when you win a $10 bet, you can earn $125 in sports bonus bets. You play for fun. You love to win. You bet with Bet Parks. Download the app and play along. Must be 21 or older. Please gamble responsibly. Don't e-pay this. If you oh. or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. No, you did but, not work. By the way, you can't even get a Jake Cave prop. It doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's it's not even on the board. If you're going to do that, you might have to handwrite a note to a teller. <laughs> I'll go down to Ben Salem you, you or go South to the bank. Hey, Jimmy, so. I know a guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's how you get Mazahura. Yeah. Uh, listen, I don't know what's worse, the fact that Jake Cave doesn't have a prop or the fact that you just casually just threw Ipe in there. He paid. He's an easy addition to our Yeah. Uh, don't be an ePay Sports gamble <laughs> responsibly. Um, all right. So, Tyler, you There's have some of the advanced numbers here on Bryce Harper's uh, unfortunate luck, I uh, guess, with his batting average. Why don't you just killing read these? my fantasy team. Uh, because I will stumble yeah, all over so that. Yeah, so I, I think you guys are, are, are playing into the fact that Harper's probably really, really close. And the, sure the, the kind of the expected numbers uh, play into that a little bit. He's in the 73rd percentile in expected slugging. He's in the 74th percentile in average exit velocity. He's in the 76th percentile in hard hit percentages. And uh, his average on fastballs this year, he's seen about 130 fastballs this season so far, is 73 points lower than his expected average. His average is 222. His expected average is 295, which means Jeez. he has run into some hard luck. And, you know, hitting the ball hard on the ground into double plays doesn't give me a lot of like oh my gosh he's right there but when you do have an exit velocity that's in the 76th percentile or a 74th percentile and your hard hit percentage is in the 76th percentile it says that you are on the ball you're just running into some unfortunate luck yeah i mean he's no yeah. brandon marsh but we can't all be brandon marsh right no. i mean that would just yeah. be unfair to hold him to that standard yeah. <laughs> he just wants to get a hit guys as a bryce is saying he's frustrated he just wants to get a hit he's He's like, I'm pretty emotional with what I do. You know, I I think whenever you get a ball like that, you're always going to be emotional and frustrated. And yeah, when you see the plays that he has, it's like, oh, Bryce, yeah. my fantasy team is dragging because of this. <laughs> I've lost two in a row. We're not is talking he not about even fantasy thinking baseball. about your fantasy team? I only team? lost it's, one. How it's selfish almost of him. like Bryce doesn't. My team Worry is literally about your named team. Bryce Betts are washed. My two guys are Bryce <laughs> and Mookie Betts. Mookie's doing his part. Bryce. Bryce got to yeah. step up. But it, it really does <laughs> seem like, I mean, like sometimes those advanced numbers, you know, I'm old, so I don't always buy yeah. them. But when they line up exactly with the eye test and what you're seeing, you're like, all right, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about Bryce Harper. No, not yeah. worried at all. I, the only guy I'm really worried about offensively is basically Nick. Okay. Nick? But I and, like, and, you and, know, and the hot so streak is going to come. Right. So yeah. it's just like ebbs and flows with him. Uh, enjoy the good times when they're here and they'll be here. But you do wonder, you know, some of these guys are now like 31, 32, 33. Like that's when players historically, not Phillies players, but most players, yeah. you know, start to take a little bit of a dip. Whit Merrifield, um, mm. I lied. I might be a little worried about Whit Merrifield as well. Yeah. Um, he's not batting too well. No. I think he's hitting 130. Uh, his OPS is 305. Now, the, this is where I minor gripe with Rob Thompson. 
you're playing wit too much. Like he was brought here to play mm -hmm. three to four days a week yeah. at yeah. most. And it feels like we're getting five. Yeah, it feels like we're getting a lot of wit. And, you know, but it, here's the thing. If we rewind to when they signed Whit Merrifield and why they signed Whit Merrifield, it was they wanted somebody good enough who, if Rojas couldn't hit, if the sure. outfield was struggling, right. that they could plug him in. And if... Give Stoddick an occasional blow. Right, exactly. right. But but if the other players were playing well, they didn't want somebody, they didn't want a superstar that was going to block their way. Right. Yes. So, you know, you sort of took that chance. You can go either way. And if Witt's not performing and Rojas is starting to pick things up. Yeah, I was going to say, with, got Marsh yeah. left. with Marsh right. being an everyday player and nobody yeah. debates that anymore. And now Rojas may be turning a corner here. Let's go to Witt on the back burner a little right. bit yeah. more. And I, yeah. listen, I was okay with the fact that Johan got back back days off, got a chance to reset. You get Witt out there. Um, but I do think right now we are seeing too much of Witt. You know, this mm. is not the role he was brought in to play. And because Brandon Marsh is playing so well, I think Johan now giving better at bats, I think now is, is the time. Scale him back, get him back to being like two, three days a week. And I think you'll get more from him. Less is more with a guy like Whit Merrifield. You know, yeah. his, his role as a utility piece is to be a plug-in where needed versus someone that you're going to pretty regularly. So I do hope that we're now reaching a point of April where some of those, like, first few weeks issues are getting straightened out and we can turn a corner because, you know, to see Trey get his first home run finally, to see um, Johan doing better, to see Nick finally be able to get a hit and help the team win, you know, the, they're slowly making progression, um, but it's actually been on the other side of the ball at times that's been the most frustrating when you look at the struggles. Yeah, the play I mean, the other night. Especially with Zach Wheeler on the mound. Yet again, the Phillies struggle. Um, just some really bad defensive plays that we've seen from them. Yeah, Witt uh, kind of went at it like uh, palm up and then tried to switch at the last second. And I think that one kind of chapped his ass a little bit. Like I think it was, it was scored a hit anyway. Yeah. Everything, everything's a hit. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ricky Metallico just bitches about did, that did, all did, the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the official scoring has gotten a little lenient these days. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about Zach Wheeler. Jeez. Oh, um, for the most part, he's been great. The offense behind him has not. So Zach Wheeler has <laughs> six combined uh, runs uh, of support in his four starts this year. Uh, he's tied for eighth. Tyler, does that say? Correct. Tied Ooh. for the eighth least amount of runs per game of run support in his starts this That's season. That checks because it feels yeah. like it. And, and to, to play even further, two of the guys ahead of him have only made one start apiece. Tyler McGill made his first start the other day. He didn't start the season with the team. He was on the IL. He only pitched four innings. One of the guys is with the uh, Chicago Cubs, and it's, um, uh, excuse me, uh, Tanner Banks. He was a... Uh, a, a bullpen game starter. Okay. He started two innings. And so the, he technically qualifies as well. But of the qualified starters, uh, Chris Flexen, Nick Pavetta, Matt Manning, George Kirby, and Keaton Wynn are the only guys that have a lower run support per game than Zach Wheeler's 1.5 runs per game. And Wheeler's, even with the blow up yesterday in the, in the sixth inning, he's still at a three ERA. Yeah. And, and that tells you that the Phillies offense as a whole is struggling, but they're, they're really struggling against other teams' number ones. That's, yeah. uh, that's yeah. all I read from that. I think it's going to change, uh, but you hate to waste Zach Wheeler starts. Yeah, yeah, you really do. And, you know, yesterday, um, this would be a, a much easier story if it wasn't for the Grand Slam yesterday. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So then, like, you got to throw that in there. Maybe yesterday wasn't the one, but uh, the couple starts before that, it's it's weird. I don't know if, yeah, he, he tends to be going up against the other team's best pitchers. Um Historically, we've seen this from the Phillies a lot. Yeah, where they're you know the, the where oh, Cole, they just can't Cole Hamill's run support was like yeah. yeah you know you talked about it for eight straight years. It's like can they just give this guy some run support? Yeah, so I don't I don't know if they press more mm -hmm. and like once the story starts to develop, like we never score for this guy. Is it like a self fulfilling prophecy? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I know Dave P in the chat is mentioning that um, you know Wheeler's grand slam is concerning. Well, here's some more concerning things for you. Uh, so oh, no great. pitcher. Yeah, let me add to it. No pitcher in Major League Baseball has had worse defensive play behind him this season. It, I was going to say it feels like he's had shitty defense. According to StatCast, like statistically, it, yeah. he's actually had the worst. Um, but good. then on top of That's that, good. it gets better. Oh, good. So <laughs> entering Sunday. <clears throat> Entering Sunday, Phillies pitchers have forced 29 ground balls that were handled by an infielder in a potential double play situation. Only seven of those resulted in two outs. 
21 produced just one out, while the other led to zero, thanks to a throwing error. Overall, the Phillies have turned only seven double plays in 16 games this season. Only five teams have turned fewer. And, uh, that feels right. Yep, yeah, and Phillies pitchers entered Sunday with the second highest ground ball rate in the majors at 51.5%. So it's not even just Zach, but overall it has not been good, and I feel like it's just been the most obvious when Zach's on the mound. Yeah, Tyler but and I talked about this. when you look at that this. grand slam, and I know one other thing to add to that is you look at that grand slam, what even led to that grand slam is also concerning. You know, to have in that, in that stretch uh, opportunities to get out, opportunities to – you know, keep guys from getting on base and you, there's the error Alec Bohm has, there's, you know, it's, it's an error, a walk, a fly ball, a base hit. And then you see Jack Sawinski uh, with the slam. So it's like little things of little mistakes, glove placement, errors, miscalculations, but overall the support has not been there for Zach Wheeler, especially. Tyler and I talked about that on Thursday. We were like, it does feel like the Phillies are struggling to turn double plays. Yeah. Yeah. And there's the numbers to back it up. Uh, I don't know. It's Turner and Stott. Like, I don't understand I don't exactly. I was wondering if Harper's footwork on the first ba- base bag is leading to. I don't know. They're I just th- not I, quick with it this year. I think it's, mo- I think it's mostly Turner. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Like, he he makes some incredible like plays yeah. when he doesn't have time to think. But some of the routine stuff uh, just just bosses it. I, I'm going to go out on a limb fine. and say it's a bad combination when you're one of the teams that hits into the most double plays and, doesn't, and turns yes, the yeah. least. Not, not a good combo. Not, not a good not, combo. There's not and a yin and yang there. It's you just had four, four grounders wang. on Sunday. None of them resulted in two outs. And so there, there was the breakdown of like different factors. Is it, you know, exit velocity? Is it runner speed? Is it hit placement? But I do think it's just a lack, almost a focus at times. Or maybe it's too much focus. I don't know which, which extent, which side of the spectrum it's on but it feels like there are plays that should be two outs and the ball's getting bobbled it's getting they're misreading yeah. it maybe they're too you know a trey turner for example is thinking too far ahead of what he's doing before he actually secures the ball i don't know it just seems very lax and it's definitely frustrating to see them giving up so many double plays but not being able to get two outs on plays that they should but you know if if you want to go glass half full on this it's like okay. all these things are going wrong give us the positivity so much room for improvement <laughs> Definitely. right and they're still late eight yeah, yeah it's, you know it's it's a slow start it's not the hot they, start they wanted to get off they to, just but always muscle. start shitty yeah they really do yeah. i mean i think somebody in the chat put up the win percentages by month and like the phillies just always stink in may and april uh, and yeah. you're actually kind of ahead of where you were last That's year. That's the crazy part. <laughs> it's wild. frustrating as, as everybody may feel. This start is better than last season. Statistically, yeah. Yeah. in a number of ways, record-wise. I mean, I, it took them until I, I think it was literally April 17th before they were at 500 last year. They've been hovering around 500 to start off the season. Well, so there's some positives. We and there's take some games coming up you should be able to win. We'll get into the details yeah, of the Rockies series. Ten of them. You got yeah. You got Rockies, you White got Sox, White Sox, and then you got uh, four with the Reds. I think. Before Another we move on, can we talk about here. Kyle Schwarber's numbers? Because uh, there was a great piece that came out that uh, came out on Major League Baseball. I forget who wrote it. Actually, my apologies. I'll find the name. All right. Well, you're finding that. I'll tell our friends about yeah, the great taste yeah, let's talk about and Kyle the less after. filling flavor of Miller Light. Uh, Sunday at my house is turned into a. Uh, a friends and family event where like every week I bring the TV outside. My buddies bring their kids over. The kids are playing in the Creek in the backyard and friends and family are around yesterday. My sister and mom stopped by and it's always great to say, Hey guys, fridge full of Miller light down there. Go grab yourself one because you know, Miller light is the original light beer since 1975. And a lot has changed over the time, um, including prices on everything. But Miller lights, delicious flavor has remained the same. Uh, and when friends or family around, it's it's really enjoyable to watch the kids play, have the Phillies game on the TV, and just enjoy a Miller Lite with some friends. Uh, and it's just it's the best light beer. You can drink them and not feel like a total bloated fat ass. It's great. I enjoy that in my beer. Uh, and Miller Lite <laughs> keeps it simple, undebatable quality, great taste, and only 96 calories. It's the beer that strips away everything you don't need and holds on to what matters most. A light beer that tastes like beer should. The original light beer since 1975. And times change, but you can always enjoy the great taste of Miller Lite. Tastes like Miller time. Get Miller Lite delivered directly to your door by visiting MillerLite.com slash P-H-L-Y fills or pretty much anywhere that sells beer is going to have Miller Lite. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 
96 calories per 12 ounces. It's the best all day beer. Yes. I think. Absolutely. Like if it's Definitely. a Sunday afternoon game and you want to have like a nine. couple. <laughs> <laughs> stick nine with, stick with Miller Lite and yeah. stay safe. Well, you know where else you can make sure to enjoy those Miller Lights? It's why you're hanging with us at PHOI because at PHOI, when you become a diehard member, you get a free shirt or hat. You also get a chance to check out our events that we have in person. We've had watch parties, tailgates. We have uh, some watch parties actually coming up here in the month of May that we're going to be doing for the Phillies that you guys can join us for. And we'll have all those details on our website at allphly.com. We'll be tweeting about it. We'll be sharing it. So you can stay tuned for that information. As a diehard, you also get to become and join, I should say, our conversation on the Discord. We do so many great things in the Discord, whether it's our Fantasy Baseball League or it's our conversations about every team, every sport, or even things like movies and music. And then in addition to all that, we've got, outside of our shows, some articles written by some of our great writers, like none other than John Foley, that you guys can check out on our website. So head on over to allphly.com today. Become a diehard. Check out our merch, our events, our shows, our articles. Lots of there for you to be able to take in. Um, and make sure that you're enjoying getting all the insight that you need around all things Philly sports. All right, we'll get to your Kyle Schwarber stats in a second. Uh, Julian C. bringing some positivity oh, yeah. in the chat. Uh, he said, I just saw that the Phillies are 14th in runs scored in the NL <laughs> and, and have grounded into the third most double plays. People are only pissed because this offense is doing the same crap as no the NLCS. Uh, yes, that is accurate. Um, <laughs> I think, you know, the Nick Castiano stuff, we have the, the NLCS uh, fresh in our minds, and then you see the season start this way, and it's easy to kind of just go, well, nothing's going to change. Baseball is a weird, funky sport, and you just got to be in the zones at the right time. So I'm not saying that should make you feel a ton better because he didn't feel good in the right times last year. But then in the NLDS, you know, the guy's on a tear, and he's Blastianos. So, you know, baseball does involve a lot of luck, um, and, you know, the Phillies should be turning out of it any day now. You can't sustain this over a full season. Yeah, I mean, there's just some of this stuff has to has to balance out yeah. over, the, over the course of 162, and with with Strider down for the Braves, you know, the division's not, up for grabs. Yeah. yeah, the division's up for grabs. You know, not celebrating inju in injury, of course, but no. you look at it, and you know, I I really like the Phillies' chances. I I do think one of the most frustrating parts about this, and I know in the chat, you know, Slem, Julian, Christy. Ray, up, Ralph's Ralph? giving you some love. Um, you know, I, I, for everybody that's frustrated, I do think what makes this year different compared to last year is last year coming off of the run to the World Series, you could make a lot of cases of, first of all, just the excitement to even get that far. Um, but, you know, the expectations coming into last year were different. But to have two straight years of World Series, NLCS, falling short, same issues in both postseason runs, to now see it, you know, tr continue into the start of this season, it's like we've seen this already. And you can't continue. It's like fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice. Or fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Like you can't continue to have the same issues and, and just everybody's going to make excuses for it. At this point, what we're seeing now with the offensive struggles and the production issues, the double plays, and even on the defensive side, not giving Wheeler support is what we saw at the end of last season, the stolen bases that they've given up. It's a lot of those same issues that carried over. So I understand people's nerves and frustration and just overall anger behind that. But I do think it's better to have this, as you mentioned, John, early in the season. It is still April. As mm. long as we're not having this conversation in June and July. Yes. Then I will be okay or with October. it. Or October. Or <laughs> October. Yeah. Like I, I'm just going to continue saying that. I'm fine <clears throat> with the Phillies having these blunders now. But when we're rolling around September and we're celebrating like our birthdays, because that you know I remember. Wow, your you remember? I do. Oh. I do. Wow. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm or pretty terrible with it. I still think my wife's birthday is two days uh, earlier than it is. November fifth. I'm November fourth. Ah, dang it. it was that was pretty impressive though. It's better than I do with my own wife, and I've known her 20 years. <laughs> so you know, who knows? We're getting closer towards the fall, and we're you know we're working out of that. Um, you know, we're nearing the end of the regular season. I should say. We should not still be having these conversations, Phillies. No uh, more. No shout mass. out Dave P. Uh, he says, nothing better than a Miller Lite with a bunch of cherry tomatoes. Ugh. I've never heard that before, Ugh. but you cherry do tomatoes. you, Dave. I'd I do love it, cherry tomatoes. It, it pairs no. nicely with anything. <laughs> Honestly, it's pretty <laughs> This is our Had finest Miller Lite, sir. Yeah. <laughs> it's vintage 2019. Might I recommend some cherry tomatoes <laughs> for your pairing? Um, That's interesting. All right. Did you find your Kyle Schwarber numbers? I did. I did. It was Paul Casella with MLB. Say Paul Casella. Yeah, Paul uh, does a good job. So 
Kyle Schwarber, we saw go two for two with two walks, and he's been phenomenal against all pitchers. Now, the numbers that we've seen, Saturday marked the first time in Kyle's career that he reached base five times against a left-handed pitcher in the same game. In fact, he had never done it four times. Kyle Schwarber also became just the third left-handed hitter in the past eight seasons to reach five times against a left-handed pitcher in a game. We talked about Kyle Schwarber's slow starts to seasons this year. Flim Schwarber is not that. Schwingles, as John Sequoia yes. calls him. So the yeah. other times that that's happened, it was Anthony Rizzo in April of 2023 versus the Angels and Juan Soto on my birthday, actually, in 2021 yeah. against the Braves. Ironic because we're talking birthdays. But Kyle Schwarber's numbers have been phenomenal so far. Um, he's been hitting. We saw the the home run, the 424 foot home run with that 104 exit velocity. We've seen him just consistently giving us good at bats. And for Kyle, he mentioned how, you know, he's, he's seeing the ball well, he's getting the results he wanted, and he's feeling good. You know, the results are something that he knew would come. He's feeling good. And he has been surprising for many yeah. people because of the fact that he's been consistent versus left-handed and right-handed pitchers and also um, one of the bright spots. His one other thing, entering Saturday, his 19.1% chase, chase rate was is the lowest of his career. His first pitch swing rate, 32.3%, his highest. His overall swing rate, 43.8%, his highest since 2017. So we're getting some great prime Kyle yeah. Schwarber right now. And it tracks with, you know, he, he showed up in spring training. He was slimmed down. You can see it. He's, mm -hmm. moving, he's moving around so much better. And my one fear was, okay, you, you've slimmed down. Are you going to lose some power off of that? But right. He's, got that, he's still got right. the power, too. So it's looking like a really good season for Schwarber early yeah. on. You know, knock on wood. Knock on wood. His <laughs> knees might have been bothering him more than we knew yeah, the last two that's years. Yeah, like. Um, so, you know, he does look good. Um, a couple little, little stats here. Uh, one from, uh, Todd Zalecki as well to add to you. Uh, sorry, this is back in the negative realm of things. Oh, I don't mean no. to go there. No. Uh, it'll change. It's okay. It's okay. Everything's fine. This is uh, fine. the Phillies, as Todd <laughs> points out, only have three hitters in the lineup with a 750 OPS uh, or better. Brandon okay. Marsh at 976, uh, future all-star Brandon Marsh, Bryce Harper at 764. And this goes to his bad luck, you know, like once that average gets up, um, you know, he's going to be, he's going to be just fine. And Alec Bohm at 753. Um, they have two players besides Johan Rojas with a below 500 OPS. Oh, no. Uh, that is Nick Castellanos, Johan Rojas, and Whit Merrifield. Oh. That right there in a nutshell is kind of like... The Phillies problem. And again, but that's not that's not going to hold. No, it won't. So no. you, you survived that stretch with all these guys playing terrible, and you came out of it at 500. And I'd, I'm really excited to see what they do over these next hand. Spring is here. I mean, nice with, weather. No more excuses. Nice weather, yeah. With Kyle and Brandon, two of the guys that are very consistent. Alec, another one actually. Um, aside from that play that led to the Grand Slam, um, for the most part, they've been the guys that have been consistent. If you can get Bryce Trey you know, get more from Nick, you know, this, this, this 500 record now becomes a winning record more consistently. So there are some like glaring, really concerning numbers, but it's, it's warm out now. Today's going to be like 80 degrees. Oh, yesterday was it's beautiful. Awesome. Yesterday Today's was beautiful. amazing. Mm -hmm. Like uh, there's no excuses now. No. Hitting season is, is, and is here's what, in. here's what hitting coach Kevin Long had to say when asked about the team struggles offensively this weekend, <clears throat> he says, nobody's worried about it. As a matter of fact, I'm not concerned one iota. I'm excited what about our team. Idea. Yeah, what I know. Uh, we're getting our <laughs> bearings. We're getting settled in. We'll get hot when we need to get hot. I would say just get hot now. If it's yes. within your like, what, the, what do you classify? <laughs> we can start like, what do you classify as need to get hot? Is that yeah. What I mean, yeah. yeah, I didn't know that was an option. Can we opt in? <laughs> Flip the switch. Can we, can we turn on the hot setting? Because the game, we're, not, yeah. we're playing games Always. now. I, like, I, love I think that's a good time. It's great optimism. <laughs> I love the optimism out of Kevin Long, but I mean, not one iota. Maybe can I get one, two iotas? <laughs> yeah, can we get a couple? Of concern? There's a couple iotas. It's like, uh, but all right. If he's not concerned, yeah, it's good to hear because they, they can turn it on when they need to, guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's all. Uh, he said, "Don't <laughs> let us do what we're doing now, uh, and then all of a sudden we get hot because it's going to be dangerous." I mean, I do agree with that. Like Nick Castellanos as a seven-hole hitter shouldn't like sink your entire offense. He's going to get hot once no. he becomes hot. You have a seven hitter of that caliber, <laughs> and then Bryce starts coming around a little bit more, and like the offense could be scary, but. We're getting to the point where, like, okay, like, yeah, like you know, me and Anthony for 15 years have battled. 
Memorial Day is his mark. <laughs> you can't yeah. worry about anything. It's a Memorial Day. I think that's Charlie Manuel's line. Probably, too. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I hear you, but like, this is just a frustrating watch right now. Mm -hmm. And there's so much Phillies excitement out there. You just, I'm not even so the much crowds, concerned with the, the wins. The crowds are showing up. Yeah, 44,000 you said yesterday? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. biggest crowd of the season yesterday. It's, it's not that I'm concerned about the wins and losses. I just want to watch some good baseball. Yeah. And you're not seeing <coughs> good games a lot of these times. It's kind of a tough watch. Yeah. And I just want to get to enjoyable baseball. That's all. You exactly. mean like a 9-2 game is not that enjoyable for you? No, that wasn't fun. <laughs> but I, I mean, I do understand on the one side, for every sport, there's that time. Like the NBA, it's like around Christmas that you really feel like the real season starts. For baseball, it's around Memorial Day. Like every league has their time where it's like, okay, the early season, quote unquote, preseason blunders are done. The real season has started. But like I have always said, I don't mind losses. There is such thing as like a good loss. You know, it's a walk off. You go into extra innings. It's down to the wire. It's back and forth. I just don't like games where you know who's going to win pretty early and yeah. you're not getting any production. It's like they never showed up and it's just ugly from the jump. That's not fun, especially with 162 games. Like if you're going to lose, make it that four, three, yeah. five, four, you know, a, a big play that's causes you to lose versus it being like you just never even stepped out of the clubhouse. Yeah, you're both exactly right. Just like some good baseball and some fun. Can we get some fun offense? They've only scored yeah, more than five runs once. That's un like that's, that's what I'm talking that's a about. Thing. Like if yeah. you're losing a game seven six in April to the Pirates, it's like all right, right. you gave a good fight. That was a fun baseball right. game, a nice day. When you're going on the Zach Wheeler games and giving them six runs of support across four starts, it's like okay, I I do have a limit Ugh. to how much I can like yeah. hate myself. Right. That is now. the thing. Sixteen games in, there's only been a handful of games where they've actually scored five runs. And only one where they had more. And, and that had to have like, been the Harper three home run game, right? That was yeah, that was the cool. one. That was it. I, <laughs> Everything else has been like two runs scored, one run scored, getting shut out. Like, just can we score? I know. And there's so much excitement around this team. So just like for the, for the fans' sake, yeah. <laughs> everybody's so invested. Everybody's so emotionally invested. They're showing up at the ballpark, and then you sit there and you watch a nine-two loss to the Pirates. Uh, like, yeah. Come it's on. just rough. The Come W's on. and L's aren't as important as, you know, the, the time investment in the team. We just want to see nice baseball. Yeah. I just well, want to be pleased when I watch this offense. Right. You know, like. It's supposed to be something that makes us happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mean you're not enjoying the opportunities to be able to celebrate, you know, things like Andrew McCutcheon's 300th home run? Oh, we're going to get like to that every night. We're <laughs> going we're gonna to switch gears to the MLB rundown here. Because, like, my goodness. we're. I mean, this is what we have to celebrate at Citizens Bank Park. It's. I know he's he's. You know, his ties to the Phillies. Oh, I always loved like, Uncle Larry. So, yeah, yeah, Andrew McCutcheon got his 300th career home uh, run this weekend. Uh, that was good to see. But I think the news of the weekend around Major League Baseball was obviously Spencer Strider. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Now he's going under elbow surgery, not Tommy John. So there's a doctor in Texas who has now developed this new method of treating the UCL where it's not Tommy John surgery. Um, it's closer, they're saying now, to like 13, 14 month rehab mm -hmm. as opposed to like potentially a two year thing. Uh, if this proves effective, it's going to, you know, be a great thing for Major League Baseball and pitchers out there everywhere. Um, so they say Spencer Strider could be back, uh, you know, as early as like a little bit into next season, maybe the All Star break next year, but it doesn't appear they're going to lose him for two years. Uh, so that's a positive, I think, for the game. Uh, but the other place I went because I'm a cynical Philadelphia sports fan was where was Andrew Painter with this one a year ago? Yeah, yeah, right. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know if that's a healthy place for my mind to go, but I immediately was like, like why? Well, why is he doing option? it? But our guy didn't, but there's probably something. If this more was an option know. on the table, why didn't we see this for Andrew Painter? <laughs> yeah, Dr. Keith Meister. Meister. Uh, Meister. Keith Meister. I, I think. Meister. No, it's probably Meister. Yeah, I don't know. I was actually. just thinking Meister Meister. I think Meister it made lady me think of Heat Meister. Meister Meister. It made me think of Heat Meister from the. I know you do not know that. The Claymation? Yeah. The Christmas movie, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mr. Heat Miser. I mean, I've heard Heat Miser, but I okay. wouldn't know it's what it's in reference to. <laughs> so, Dr. Keith Meister sounds like Heat Miser, but anyways, uh, to see the news that he underwent surgery was the reminder, exactly as we've been talking about on the show, of the direction of injuries amongst pitchers. You know, the, the amount of guys that need, needed surgery and that had been out. And Jason Stark, your guy, Jamie, put out a great piece on the athletic and actually broke down the numbers. Okay, you ready for these numbers? If it's from Jason Stark, yes. I'm Hold ready on for these to numbers. your pants here because this is wild. Ooh, um, sounds sexy. 
Oh, maybe I should have said pants. Hold on to your hats. Yeah, Ellis. there you go. <laughs> Wrong thing. Okay, so of the six men who lead all active pitchers in career ERA, whip, and wins am- above replacement, five of them are on the injured list at the moment. Justin Verlander, Clayton Kershaw, Max Scherzer, and Jacob Verlander DeGrom, should be returning this week, Cole. I think. He should. He is working back. Of the 10 active pitchers who have won a Cy Young Award, eight, eight are currently hurt. And that includes the five above, plus Sandy, Shane, and Robbie Ray. Of the five active starters who have won multiple Cy Youngs, all of them are hurt except for Blake Snell. Of the 12 active starters who have led their league in strikeout rate in any of the past seven seasons, any of the past seven, seven are current, are physic, aren't are physically able to throw a baseball these days. Yes. So 12 active starters, seven aren't even able to throw a baseball these days. And that would include Spencer Strider, of course, and Shohei Otani. And then there are eight pitchers who had Cy Young votes. Let's just not even look at the winners. Cy Young votes as recently as last season. Of those eight, yep, two of the three pitchers who received Rookie of the Year votes last season included, they've already been on the injured list. So eight pitchers who got Cy Young votes as recently as last season, and all eight of them are already on the injured list this year. So it's like above 50% for the number of top pitchers we're talking about starters leading the league in ERA, WHIP, WAR, um, Cy Young winners that are injured. Not even like on this day, not even active in Major League Baseball. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Tyler Glass now, I was watching some of the Padres Dodgers game and he was interviewed uh, and they asked him about this. And uh, um, actually, one of the, their pitching coach, I believe, is uh, the former Mark Pryor. Uh, he was standing next to him, messing with him during the interview. But they asked Glass now about, um, his comments about the sticky stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think everybody's answers are kind of right here that there's a lot of contributing factors um, to it, like, you know, lowering the seam, sticky stuff, starting too young at an age and velocity, uh, pitch clock, you know, like there's a lot of contributing factors. But I saw a list uh, recently, I think we retweeted it from our show account, um, and it was average velocity on fastballs for starting pitchers, 96 and a half miles an hour and higher the last like four major league seasons. And I think the list had about 16 guys on it. I think there was currently three that have not had some Tommy John at some point yeah. in their career. So I think yeah. I think the most obvious correlation to this problem is just velocity. Velocity is yeah. velocity and you know, everyone's looking for the velocity, but there's some things that arms just aren't really meant to do. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of the most troubling things is that it is, it's not just the major leaguers, it's starting at a younger oh, age. Oh, sure. Yeah. I think, um, That's why I think, it's almost like good that Andrew Painter had it done at such a young age. Yeah, it sort of feels like, let's get it out of the way because kind of. like uh, Zach Wheeler got his out of the way, right? Like, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's not a, where you want the sport to be. Like. No. <laughs> no, it shouldn't be that you have to go get uh, Tommy John surgery to then be okay. Like, I know Zach Wheeler was asked about it and he was mentioning, you know, like one of the things that probably has helped him is he already did to get the surgery. He already has, he already has got a new ligament, so he can, um, you know, stay healthier. But overall, it's just sad to see that you almost find yourself just kind of waiting for who's next, you know, who, when yeah. is it going to happen? I mean, and I'll be honest, it's crossed my mind when watching the Phillies. I know. Mm-hmm. Like, it's terrifying. It's such to like think a about. pandemic in baseball it's right like, now that I'm like, all right, when's the next, like, who's the Philly that's going to get hurt? Because right. it just You're feels just, like somebody's going to get hurt. Just waiting that's for the thing. It, it sucks. And, and it's not clear what the answer can be, you know? That's it, what everybody says. I don't like, know how you get guys answers. to not throw hard when they know they can throw hard. Right. Like right. Aaron Nola in the, the rain game in St. Louis, Matt Gelb wrote a good piece about this, yeah. where it was like in this day and age, a pitcher actually dialed like, it back. Dialing it back, taking something off. It yeah. Was like, mm-hmm. But like, you know, somebody in the chat said, we need more Jamie Moyers of the world. I'll spiral out. Yeah. You know, 25 years. All yep. location, no velo. Uh, Jenny Moyer um, probably doesn't get to the big leagues. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, today exactly, they're going to go, wait, exactly. you throw 87? Yeah. No, no, we're out on you. <laughs> Greg Maddox, oh, you, you got nice control, but, you know, yeah. where, what are you throwing? Sorry, kid. You got no guess. You're not in triple digits. Uh, John Smoltz was, uh, we'll come to you in a second, Tyler. John Smoltz, I was listening to him call a game recently in the past couple of days, uh, and he said, like, he wouldn't have had the career. By today's standard of baseball, right. he wouldn't have been given the opportunity to have the career he had, whether it was bullpen or starting, because he was like, I didn't throw like that. And yeah. now it's such like a qualifier to even get to the big stage. Well, there's a lot of guys that are either, you know, vets now and, and still currently playing or retired guys that have similar sentiments, uh, sentiments. I mean, Chris uh, Bassett, not too long ago, sure. said pretty much the same thing where, you know, the value is velocity and, 
it doesn't necessarily translate to it's that pitchers versus throwers argument again. And right. I, I think that there has to be a middle ground because, like you said, you're not going to ask a guy to dial back his velocity just because, like, there has to be – you're going to have to get your sports science legitimate, like, confirmed research and, and tangible evidence to show that this is what is the, the reason behind it and not just us sitting here up here sure. saying – Guys throw harder, so therefore they're they're more prone to injury before you get these guys to stop throwing so hard. So it's going to take probably a decade to get enough developed research at a you know legitimate level and a tangible level before you get any kind of dial back. Yeah. So in yeah. the in the short term, how do you fix this? I don't know. I, I think it's. I don't it, think you can. It, well, it's it's really really hard to pinpoint. Well, like that if you're Orion, thing. sorry, if you're Orion and you're coming up and you know, all right, look, I got a shot at a 15 year MLB career here, and I can throw 99.8 on average on my fastball, and I'm on the doorsteps of a big payday. What I'm gonna dial it back to 96? No, that's how you get paid. Exactly. Yeah. So like I, there is you can't expect guys to not throw as hard as they can. So because there's a lot of. There's a lot but of effing money on the line. Are we I know to just... one of the, the trainers for the Phillies, uh, Paul Bouchette, uh, I think is how you say his last name, was mentioning that one of the things they are trying to do is strengthen the, the shoulder, the elbow, everything in the elbow, uh, tendons, ligaments. You know, they have technology also that they're implementing certain machines that can help strengthen tendons and stuff because you just, you don't know. It's almost like you're just trying to do as much as you can to be preventative and proactive around it. But the hard part is, as we all know, Every time we talk about a pitcher, it's what is the speed of, you know, what velocity they're throwing at. Are they a 95, 96 mile per hour pitcher? Are they low 90s, high 90s? Like, that's how you gauge their talent. And mm -hmm. maybe it starts there. I know everybody's mentioned we don't know if it's the pitch clock. We don't know if it's the velocity. We don't know if it's, just that, if it's them being so young and throwing um, from such a young age and never being truly taught how to pitch properly. You know, there's so many question marks, but I do think, as you're mentioning, Tyler, it's time to take that hard look at let's scale it back. Let's see what we can, what we can isolate almost like not to be all sciencey, but what are the variables here? How can we isolate them and figure out what actually is contributing to it? Because ultimately, if you're going to continue pressuring guys to have to throw mid to high 90s, but then on the other side, you know, if you you're going to get the contract, but you might also have to be out for a year or two with a Tommy John surgery what's the risk and reward there? Would you rather be someone that's not getting the major contract, can have a longer career and stay healthier, but you're not going to get paid as much? Or on the reverse, you're a Spencer Strider, a Shohei Otani, a Zach Wheeler when he had his years ago, and now you're out for a year. You know, it's just, yeah. which would you rather have? I think I'd rather have the guy that's able to actually pitch be on the mound and maybe just throw a little less well are you going to tell like a, like a mason miller for example is with oakland right oh, now and he's, he was hitting 104 this so weekend. he's average his average fastball velocity is 100.6 he is 99th percentile and expected he's, era expected batting average he's 100th percentile in fastball velocity chase rate is through the chart uh, through the roof whiff rate is at 100 percent k rates at 98 percent like you're and now granted he's a reliever so it's a little bit different than starters going out and throwing 97, 98 but for he's gonna 90 pitches. But mm -hmm. so and so here's the thing: you're playing in doom and gloom world at that point. And and I, are you are you correct? But it's plausible and probable. I, I mean, mean, at when some you look point, at a guy gets hurt. But can you can you sit here and and justify and say, well, you're either not going to get a contract, you need to dial it back, or uh, figure something else out until like, until you get hurt, like. I yeah. can't. I can't live in that that mindset. I think Ray said it in the chat. Like it's just part of the game now, and it is. Like I don't think you can dial guys back because if you're Mason Miller, you know you can make a lot of money in this league throwing 106 miles an hour. What are you going to do? Not yeah. throw 106 right. miles That's what an I mean. hour? Like yeah. you're just not. And so I unfortunately these surgeries are just a part of the game. And hopefully this new uh, what's it, Doctor Meester, uh, <laughs> Meester, Meester. Uh, hopefully he hopefully can. He's going to you know, <laughs> hopefully this new the hands of the this surgery can at least uh, negate some of the losses, both individually and for teams. I think there's another potential solution here, which is like teams maybe starting to look for the value in these guys that maybe can't hit triple digits, but but know how to pitch. Because mm. if you if you recall when we we were looking at all the Phillies prospects over the offseason, right, every one of them was the same story: big arm, 
touches 100 miles an hour. George Clausen right now is lighting it up. Has, yeah. Has, yeah. Uh, but for the most part, most of them did not know where the ball was going. And that was his problem before this year. Yeah, right? yeah, so he couldn't yeah. throw strikes. So, now he's at least starting to throw strikes. They're all looking for, for, these, for these guys with the big arms that they can teach to throw strikes. Most of the time, they don't really get there. Yeah. Maybe like they'll, they'll be like some sort of market inefficiency that some teams will start noticing. Hey, a lot of these guys that don't, don't get near 100 are being overlooked. But they can pitch. Yeah. But they exactly. can locate. That's what somebody said, uh, you know, more focus on movement and not velo. Mm -hmm. You know, easier said than done because some of these breaking balls, you know, there's with the lower seams and, you know, no sticky stuff like yeah. the snap, you know, some people think is putting too much stress on the elbow. So there's uh, just there's just no answer to this. It's just a part of the game. Uh, yeah. A couple other MLB notes. The Marlins placed uh, the burger man on the IL. He went down. Uh, Jackson Holiday got his first. What's what's wrong with the burger man? My fantasy team. Oh, he's on your team. What's that? My team's falling apart. Oh, I. It's only in the IL fifteen. I'd be lying be if I said that didn't bring me some enjoyment. That your fantasy <laughs> team struggled. I did lose this weekend for the first time, guys. Yeah. So I'm done. Yeah. My um, winning streak's over. Jackson Holiday <laughs> got his first hit. Helped the O's. They're just a machine, man. They really um, are. Andrew McCutcheon, as we mentioned, got his 300th hit. And Tyler, I don't know how you watched Blake Snell last night. Uh, whether um, I did join the answer. <laughs> What's that? I said I didn't. It's the answer. <laughs> but he got rocked a little bit. <laughs> sure did. Uh, allowing seven runs in his second game of the year oh, versus the Blake. Rays. Not a strong start to the year for Blake Snell, but in fairness, he didn't get a he spring. Was He's until behind. Like two weeks ago. Yada yada yada. But not a uh, good start there. I didn't expect anything strong from him to start anyways i mean not only did you not have a who was our team, big hater mopar MVD, one of, no, it was MVD. 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 Yeah, yeah hated blake snell and I so mean, far he's right you <laughs> don't have a spring training like everybody else you don't know where you're gonna play instead you're off doing demos and tryouts to try to find a team um and then you finally find a landing spot and as we know with baseball as we continue to talk about with the phillies it's going to take time to get that routine and that rhythm going, especially since you didn't have this, you know, an opportunity in spring training to get going. So not the least bit surprised at all by Blake Snell's uh, sluggish start to the season. Uh, yeah. And uh, it, it, you know, it's early and numbers can change, but yeah. early on, it looks like the Phillies made the right move going <laughs> back to going back to Nola. I know he frustrates us, frustrates yeah. us all at times, but <laughs> he's, he's a horse. He's what qualifies as a horse nowadays, anyway. Yeah. Um, going deep in the games, reliable. Um, you know, uh, not not the same. It feels like he's not the same. Yeah. Injury um, risk as others. So the Colorado Rockies are coming to town. And Aaron Nola, we'll, you'll be down there tonight, John. Aaron yep. Nola on the hill versus Cal Quantrill. Uh, Phillies are a big money line favorite there at minus 275. You have to think this is a Phillies game tonight. You got to pounce the Rockies. You can't drop a series to them. Uh, and then on Tuesday, we get Ranger Suarez versus Austin Gomber. Uh, and then on Wednesday, no business person special this week. Christopher Sanchez uh, gets the bounce back game versus Ryan Feltner. And then uh, we might have to check in with our old friend Herb out in Chicago <laughs> as the uh, Chicago White Free Sox Herb. are coming through. Somebody said in the chat. Uh, and they're on the verge of signing Tommy Pham, which yeah. will continue to make them a bad baseball team, not Tommy Pham's fault, but <laughs> yeah. like, what are you doing there? <laughs> like the Just White Sox, are, like they're depressing. Hashtag free herb. <laughs> well, you're going up against a four and 12 Rockies team. You're going up against a White Sox. These group teams have six mess. wins combined. Yeah. So you need to this, pounce this, this week, the pressure, it needs, the pressure's on like yeah. the Phillies need to get the offense. Let's score more than five runs. Go on and put the game away. Make it a nice, fun, happy day. You're at home. You know, score lots of runs. Clean defensively. This week should be that week for them. Like it should. It be. should if, it's, if it's I, anything less, it would feel like a a failure. Like you it, shouldn't even. I don't even want to say a loss to any of them, but one loss between the two series is all that I can tolerate. <laughs> I mean, you really. That is it. <laughs> you really need to. You need to beat up on these bad teams, and you know the the schedule is going to balance out. If we're exactly. sure, if it's so soft now, you're going to play the. There is the a stretch of West, later. a lot of West Coast games that are uh, coming up. In West Coast, they always get killed. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, yes, it's early, but also, this is the opportunity. To, I would love to see a sweep. Yes. Please. Like, you're capable Please. of it. Go it's, do yes, it. Yes, you're very capable of doing <laughs> it. Go in the chat. It. Back 
back-to-back sweeps. No mercy, I know. Tyler no dropped mercy. a nice yeah. nugget. That the, Rockies, the, leg. the Rockies are last in team ERA. The White Sox are 28th? 25th. 25th, wow. Now, the one thing, guys, the, the unfortunate part, I guess, eyes. for the Phillies is that they're uh, – you know how you always talk about missing starters and you go, oh, you're missing oh, Strider before the injury sure. or you're missing Wheeler in this regard, right? The Phillies are missing Kyle Freeland this week, which is actually a bad thing for them because he's been the worst starter in baseball across three starts. Uh, he's given up 25 earned runs, Ooh. I believe, uh, to start the year and 28 God. hits uh, in his uh, four starts this year. He has a 13.21 ERA Damn. and a whip of 2.55, striking out just there? nine over 15 innings pitched so far. And I'm sorry, it's 23 earned runs, 32 hits. Wow. Uh, so they are missing... Unfortunately, unfortunate. missing a starter yeah. this week. But, but you know, you, whenever the, one of those guys comes in, and they, it's, it's always like a lights out <laughs> performance. Yeah, yeah, I don't like that. So maybe that's okay. I thought they were yeah, going to jump on Bailey Falter that's, last week. Oh, I was Bailey like, oh, you're, like you're going to pounce on Bailey Falter. As soon as I like left the show, I was driving home. I was like, why did you say that? Bailey yeah, Falter's yeah. going to go <laughs> deal now. <laughs> and I, I do, I I I do I think on the flip side, when they play the White Sox, Garrett Crochet will get one of those starts, who's been really good this year to so far to start the year. He's been the the one bright spot for the uh, White Sox rotation. So, I mean, listen, maybe maybe you go in uh, and no bounce excuses. back. Yeah, you, I mean, you, you probably got to take four. Yeah, yeah, if you don't take four of these next six, um, that's disappointing for sure. Yeah. Um, so we will be back tomorrow at 11 a.m. John is going to be writing and covering uh, the homestand on allphly.com. So make sure you're checking out his work. Uh, and Jim Salisbury is going to join us this week. So we'll Woo-hoo. kick off our... Our uh, check-ins with Jim weekly as well. So a lot of exciting stuff ahead. It's not all doom and gloom. The Phillies are in a good spot. Things will get better, I think. Uh, But for Renee Washington, John Foley, and Tyler Zuli, we will see you tomorrow. Have a great Monday, everyone. Hopefully you can go outside and touch some grass, as the kids say, uh, because it is absolutely spectacular (laughs) outside. Jackie Robinson Day. And, yes, the 42 (laughs) jerseys tonight at the stadium. One of the coolest things Major League Baseball does every year. Uh, always love watching tonight's game. Uh, so that's it for us here today. We'll be back tomorrow at 11 a.m. We love you. We appreciate you. Thanks for hanging out with us. Smash that thumbs up button on the way out of here, and we'll see you tomorrow. We all silly like the mayor.